yeah, there's a lot of things to remember, and sometimes you don't get all of them right. Yeah. Um, but Lucas, my man, appreciate you coming through. Made a hike up from somewhere because we are going, getting ready for tour, tour practice, getting ready to head out. Um, my man, thanks for coming through. How you been? Doing good, man. You know, super busy. Uh, always have a million things yeah. on my mind. Uh, writing a lot, practicing a lot. So. so the yeah the busy is a great place to start. Yeah. I saw Caleb the other night. We were laughing. He was like, "Dude, tell him about how he's in too many bands. It does too many stuff." Because we always joke about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is it is a running joke. But I think it's a, a testament to how good you are at so many things that you can be. Like I, yeah, I can make videos, and that's kind of it. Like I can't play this and that and whatever. Um, but yeah, it's sick to have you doing so many things. So I know we have no I seen and as within so without is like the two main stays there is yeah. one of them like the the first and then one of them joins later do they start at the same time yeah how does that work so um pretty much uh i joined as within so without when i was like 15 um and i w i don't know if i'd say like i'm an original member mm -hmm. but it was like before the band was really doing anything yeah, as so, close to originals you can so get. it was like yeah. when i joined yeah. uh I, I'm just going to say I'm an original member sure. because I'm biased. Uh, I actually joined on guitar, though, at first. Okay. Uh, we were just playing covers, and then we didn't do anything for, like, six months, didn't hear from anybody. And then Mitchell, our vocalist, goes, hey, so do you, like, actually want to do this? Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, but I want to play drums, though. Uh, okay. And I was like, I already have someone who can play guitar, so if you want to do it, just let me know. We'll get it going. So at 15, you're already multi-instrumental. That wasn't something like, I assumed that you had like joined a band and they needed a drummer or needed a guitar or vice, yeah, whichever one. And so you'd kind of said, okay, I'll make that happen. But no, by 15, you already had decided that you could play more than one thing. Yeah. So actually like I started playing guitar first. Okay. And, and I how started, old was that? I was like eight. Okay. And that was like all because of Guitar Hero. There Specifically you go. Guitar Hero Metallica. I saw my dad play like The Shortest Straw by Metallica. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, I need to do that. Hell yeah. And then I got a guitar, started taking lessons. And then about four years later, my dad, because my dad was a drummer. So he's cool, okay. he just kind of is like, you know what? I'm going to buy an electric kit. So there's some music in the house. Yeah. All right. Okay, and then so cool. basically right from there, it was like, this is interesting. And I'm going to mess around with it. And then I was just like, I kind of like this more than guitar. That's interesting. I yeah. find, I feel like metal or like, yeah, Metallica and the world that has spawned out of that is usually like a, like a black sheep. Like I was, I was the one in my family, like I like metal and they like normal music and I don't know how to <laughs> approach this. And yeah. it sounds like for you, metal was like a, a part of the household, which is a really kind of a unique way to grow up in it, but it's a cool and yeah, it makes sense that that would breed someone who appreciates all the different instruments and yeah, they're not kind of hit in their room like, oh shit, let me learn this little <laughs> cool little piece here. Yeah, my... My dad, uh, he got me into it really young. Like, I'd be like a baby, and we, in, I'd be in the car with him, and he'd be driving somewhere, and he'd just like put on Mudvayne or System of a Down, and then it like got to the point like I'd get in the car with my mom, they like go to like school, mm -hmm. and sh and school would be like right up the street, sure. so it wouldn't matter what was on the radio, but yep. I'd, like Kid Rock would come on, and I guess I'd start screaming. <laughs> I'd be like, No, <laughs> no, I don't want to listen to this. So. Yeah. <laughs> Poor kid rocked it. I hope he hears this. Yeah. <laughs> this goes out for you guys. Uh, but no, that's sick. I, uh, yeah, my version of that was um, I loved Good Charlotte growing up. And I listened to like the, we had the, someone burned me like a copy of the CD. Oh, that's and a throwback. And I listened to uh, the anthem. It was like the second song. And we had it on loop so many times. Like that song just didn't work on the CD anymore, which is like <laughs> low key an achievement of my life. I wish I had a number of how many songs that was, how many plays that was. Um, but okay, so at eight years old, we're learning guitar. And then where does drums come into the picture? About 12, like okay. 11 or 12. Um, that was, you said dad got the electric kit, so it comes in, okay. Yeah, because he, when he was like in his like teens, like early 20s, like he, him and his friends used to like play in a band. Okay. So, and he was the drummer and he was like, yeah, it wasn't really that good, but, and then he, and then he showed up with a, with a drum kit, started playing. I was like, man, for not playing for like 20 years, you're pretty good. It lives in you. Yeah, it's like yeah. riding a bike. Yeah, drums are the one thing I can't begin to play. Like, I just I can imagine I can play guitar enough that I can imagine becoming better at it, and drums just don't don't compute. I'm a very big believer of if you set your mind to anything, you can do for it, sure. You know, and so, with that in mind, I've had the idea that I should learn drums just yeah to, to uh, break that part of my brain of like no, you can figure it out somehow. Yeah, uh, I think it'd be helpful on set to some capacity. Like, I can play guitar a little bit, and we all sing in the shower. We can all imagine that. So like. 
when we're, yeah, when I'm filming, I think it helps to have just some knowledge of what they are going through on set. And yeah, it's the one other reason I would like to learn drums of like, I'm never going to join a band and play drums in them, but it'd be nice to, yeah, just have some idea of what is this human, human going through. Yeah. Uh, I, I have a love hate relationship with drums now mm-hmm. because it's like, I look at everybody else in my band. I'm like, you like, you just, you just got to carry a couple things in plug them in and you're set up just like that <laughs> yeah but it takes me like 20 minutes yeah you know 20 minutes um, is very generous yeah that's a real yeah. hurry <laughs> if you're <laughs> rushed in and get everything done fast and like it's an easy load in and there's no stairs involved yeah and yeah it, it make it makes changeover for shows stressful sometimes i bet I especially bet. if like things aren't like going as planned mm-hmm. so which they never are because that's how shows work it's, it's just, just all, part of the game yeah that's how it goes yeah uh, so at 15, you're starting to learn drums. Do you join a band then first with drums, or is guitar kind of the way into formal bands? How does that work? So I, I guess I left something out. So when I was still taking lessons, uh, a couple kids that I like went to the same like uh, music school with. We like kind of had a cover band thing going when I was like 13. Uh, and then I got I got tired of doing that, mm-hmm. and I was just like, yeah, what like kind of covers I, are we talking. Oh, like hit, hit me with one. Hit me with like, one. Like Thin Lizzy. Okay. Which okay. I love. I, I think that they are good. Like the Boys Are Back in Town is a classic. For sure. But you can imagine growing out of that cover band also. Yeah. I was just like, yeah, <laughs> like this is fun, but I want to like play heavier stuff. Definitely. So. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, so then, cool. So hang on. Also about the uh, the guitar lessons. Are those like formal like music theory lessons? Is it also kind of metal oriented? Uh, do you have any memory of them at all? Yeah. So. When I first started, it was like you you learn like the basic stuff, like the pentatonic scale. Sure. Uh, and my teacher, when I first started, was a blues player. Okay. So it wasn't like what I really wanted to learn, but I thought it was interesting enough to be mm-hmm. like, okay, like this is like worth it for me. Like I'm yeah. just getting started. Um, and then, yeah, I never really learned much theory, and I think at this point in my life, I have a much better understanding of like that stuff than I did when I was like younger. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I like I know people that are like that know so much of it that it's like I'm like yeah I don't you know what never mind I don't know anything you know yeah. it's like my friend Jake Miller like Yo. he shout out Jake he's a man yeah, yeah. he's the best um, but yeah like we'll just be like listening to a song and he'll be like this is in this time signature mm-hmm. and it's in this key and changes here. And I'm just like, how can you even count that? Like as a drummer, I can't even figure that stuff out. Interesting. It's, I would like to come. Yeah. yeah. Come to time theory as a drummer. I think time theory as a whole or music theory as a whole and how it relates to time and whatever, all the details of it um, that I am completely ignorant to, but I think it's cool how like, yeah, there are people in bands who are so familiar with it and can Jake Miller each time signature change. Yep. And then there's also you behind a kit who's like, I don't know, it sounds cool. Let's play something. And it's really Pretty interesting much. to me how both approaches can end up in the top somehow. Like, I don't know, I guess my brain is so like logical that you would think that one of them would be better in some capacity and then in the top percentage of musicians you would see one of them more yeah but i feel like yeah it's pretty even i feel like there's sometimes yeah there's a guy who knows some theory and everyone has some base knowledge of it it's not yeah. like a, a zero thing but yeah for these the people who really love it it's not everyone it's a really unique kind of subset of people who just love those little details yeah um I mean, even like going back to Metallica, I think I I remember seeing like an interview when I was like 15, I think, and I'm pretty sure it was James Hetfield. And he was like, yeah, I don't know like any music theory. I just do it. Mm -hmm. And at that point I was like, I don't need to know this then. Yeah. He doesn't know it. So why do I like, (laughs) it doesn't matter. And then at some point you get into, well, I guess drums would emphasize that. Did drums change how you approach music when that gets added in with guitar? Does that, yeah, yeah, forces you to learn a lot more about music as a whole and kind of opens your horizons there, I guess would be the classy, cheesy way to put it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's funny because like I, I'm a drummer at heart, but like guitar was my first instrument, but like, like all the guitarists that I've played music with that I like, I show them songs that I'm writing and stuff. They're like, this sounds like a drummer's writing this. Like it's like has a percussive sound. I'm like, I don't even really know what that means. Like, I'm just kind of doing this, yeah. but, uh, yeah. That's one of those fascinating that music terms that, that I, uh, yeah, it sounds like a drummer wrote it as a phrase I've heard. It sounds, yeah, whatever, insert musician. 
Uh, and it's such a weird musician's phrase that I can't begin to wrap my head around. But yeah, it is a just, I guess, a niche uh, understanding of yeah. songs and how they're written. And yeah, uh, but we're in the cover band. We grow out of Thin Lizzy, we move on from that. And then, yeah, so we're 15, 16 at this point, and we're starting to move into metal. Yeah. And then, yeah, what takes, what takes hold from there? Um, yeah, so from there, then I, I met the As Within guys mm-hmm. through a mutual friend. And, you know, like I said, um, we were, we did covers for a bit and I was playing guitar and didn't do anything for six months. And I was like, when, when Mitchell hit me up, I was like, all right, I'll do this, but I have to be the drummer. Uh, and then, you know, we start writing, uh, we go to the studio, start playing shows, start putting stuff out. And then around like 20, like late 2017, I meet like the Noah guys. Mm Mm-hmm. We played a show together. Thought they were cool, and then so it's like a yearish after. Yeah, okay. roughly. And then like, pretty much a year after that, then I was joining that band. So damn, it's yeah. interesting that you kind of opted when As Within is starting. You say I don't want to play guitar. I want to play drums in this. Yeah. And then two years later, you picked up as a guitar player in a band. Was that just the? Oh yeah. well, no, I was playing drums. Oh, you were playing. Yeah, drums I was, I was no always I. playing drums for No I. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And then I could on. play though for No I. That's always been a thought. Oh, so then you're playing guitar, guitar now and as within. No, I, I play you're drums, drums in both. both? Bands, yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm sorry. Never, I know this, could, I, you're this good. might no, no, be no. confusing. You're good. Okay. When did you switch? I swear you, at some point, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, I thought you were playing one instrument in one and different in the other. Okay. Actually, yeah. So I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I ended up uh, joining Glass Crown in late 2019 and I was playing guitar for them. Got it. Okay. And then the pandemic hit and then I was just like, yeah, yeah. I, I can't do the, like the three. So, yeah. Like, Got it. Okay, so now we have two bands. We're drumming in two yeah. bands. Okay. Yeah, we're just drumming. <laughs> got it, got it. Is it tough to... Are you writing both bands? Yeah. Is it tough to write, yeah, kind of parallel ideas yeah. and come up with two like they're... Yeah. Uh, I come up with the parallel in my brain is that once you know Spanish, it's tough to learn like Italian or French because they're so similar that it's tough to like separate them in your brain. Yeah. And I feel like with you, it's a, kind of a similar thing of the bands. Like it's not like one is deathcore and one is pop or, you know, like they're kind of close enough yeah. um, that it's tough to, yeah, it must be tough to produce ideas that are unique to each voice. It's, it's really hard. Like, especially lately, like, um, you know, I'm writing for both because mm-hmm. we're both like in a spot where like Noah is doing our first full album and as within, like we put out a f- our second full album last year. Mm-hmm. So I'm ri- trying to write singles for as within and then like trying to write album stuff for no eye and i like listen to a lot of gent <laughs> and that's like all i can write and mm-hmm. i'm just like i'll get a minute in i'll be like yeah this is a no eye song interesting yeah it's cool to have two different places to put them and i can relate in like the the music video world i like having projects in different stages so that yeah. you're writing singles here and a treatment here and for me it's yeah a treatment here and i'm editing this and putting final touches on this and it's nice but yeah if the two things are kind of in a similar stage and development that that gets a lot a little messy of yeah. yeah keeping everything keeping everything organized and everyone organized it's a it's a team of people that you're also a part of it's tough to keep every yeah give everyone their fair share of your time to some degree yeah um for sure you mentioned the the gent part uh, and how it's tough to yeah, how that's all you consume, yeah. and then that's what comes out of you. How are you, or do you think about, like, enriching... I've had this phrase in my mind of enriching my own creativity, of trying to, like, take in more stuff so that cooler stuff comes out of me. Yeah. Do you think about that, or is that something you challenge yourself to do? Yeah, so I... I mean, I don't, like, listen to only gen... I just... I love that, like, subgenre because mm-hmm. it's, like... I'm, like, not a music theory nerd, like, going back to that, mm-hmm. but I just, like... I like listening to that stuff because mm-hmm. it like, I don't know, it feels soothing for my brain, I guess, in a way. Um, but I, I like, I like a bunch of stuff. Like I grew up on new metal. I grew up on like thrash metal as well. I also like hip hop. Um, I go through phases where I like listen to certain genres a lot. And I feel like sometimes it like, like say I like listen to hip hop or like some pop and, you know, maybe like, I don't know, indie too. Mm-hmm. And I'm all over so, the place. Sometimes it, it, it like it helps, and yeah. sometimes it doesn't. So it's like it's really weird because I, I like I don't have any hacks that like 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 that that like just like all right. I'm not gonna listen to metal for a while, and then a month later I'll come back and write like ten bangers. Yep. You know? Yeah. I wish I wish it worked that way for me, but um, yeah. Are there other places you draw 
uh, inspiration from. Like I'm hearing you talk about a group in a music household. I play 12 instruments. I'm in 40 <laughs> bands. Like, uh, are there, yeah, are you interested in movies? Is there other places that inspiration comes to you from? Or is it a lot of, yeah, what sounds cool and it's about an audio experience? I Lately, it's been like, I, I'm kind of like, I listen to like movie scores like when mm-hmm. I'm watching a movie and I'll like almost focus on that more than the movie itself or like the TV cool. show. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like starting to get to a point where I'm like, I want whatever I do to feel dramatic and cinematic at the That's same really time. That's really cool. Yeah. But like I'm having trouble getting like finding what that sounds like for yeah. like metalcore, I guess. That's a cool, uh, cool challenge to undertake. And I can also relate to the process of hearing the score where I've been saying, and I'm, uh, we're now on episode 11, and I'm laughing of like, I'm 11 episodes in, I already have no idea what I've said on here and what stories I've told, and I feel like I've told the same stories in every episode, and whatever, I'll do my best. But uh, hey, it happens. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have trouble watching movies now, and I've said that I, I look at them like plays. Like, I can almost, the screen ends, and that's kind of the edge of the stage, and what I'm watching is everything outside of that, and all the people who are reaching in and holding mics, and the guy who had to set up the lights, and like, yeah. I'm consumed by all these little details, and all the different cuts, and all the editing tricks that I'm trying to figure out, and it's like, I'm not trying to figure out what they did wrong, I'm just so curious about how this thing was made, that I'm, I can't turn my brain off from exploring that, yeah. uh, and it, it definitely affects, and negatively so, affects my ability to watch stuff, yeah. is your experience of yeah, getting into scores or appreciating scores is a similar thing where it, it detracts from the movie or are you now more appreciative of movies because you enjoy the fine details there? I think I'm more appreciative, um, but I have the same experience where like I focus on that sometimes mm-hmm. more and I can't turn it off. And I feel like, especially for you, like being like a video guy, like I feel like that's going to happen because like I like I, I went to college for audio for a cool, couple okay. years and I ended up dropping out. But um yeah, it was like the same thing. Like I would like I listen to music and then I get really fixated on like the mix and like mm-hmm. oh like how did you get that sound? Yeah. Or how how did they get do That's this? It. Yeah. And it's like you yep. just it's hard to turn that off. Yeah. I'm consumed and I've also I've never been a huge movie person, which is strange that I'm now in a visual visual <laughs> world. Um, but like when I watch movies now, I'm almost watching it with the idea of like, I should like this. So let me see, let me watch it and find what I can appreciate in it. So it's like, yeah, I have no chance of ever <laughs> enjoying it because I'm just coming out from such a skewed perspective. Uh, and I always joke that like the plot is the 10th thing that I end up paying attention to because there's just, yeah, to me, it's a miracle that any movie gets made like the the degree that goes into creating such an enormous spectacle yeah. is like, yeah, filming a music video, that's three minutes is tough. And that's three locations, tops, you know, I guess if you're Taylor Swift, it's a lot more than that. But for us, it's, yeah, it's <laughs> a day Swift. in a warehouse to some degree. Uh, and yeah, the idea of doing that over three months with thousands of people and billions of dollars, like it is unbelievable to me. And I'm just so curious. Yeah. How yeah. is each of this, how's this thing coming together? Yeah. It's really crazy when you think about it that way because I also like find myself going down that same like rabbit hole mm-hmm. of like thinking about like the budget and like how many people like they're employing like just because yeah. it's like okay this looks great. Yeah. You know, and it's like so what was like each individual job? <laughs> yep. And then on top of that I get into how much of it is real, so how much of it was actually built by a person, how much of it is faked later and yeah. all of the the levels of trickery there and I think uh, we tend to think of CG as like the the Marvel superhero stuff, and it's 100%. like no. A lot of times, it's like adding in trees and stories to buildings that yeah. were otherwise one stories, and those are the ones that are the most fascinating to me. Of like, yeah, how much time goes into stuff that we never even knew exists, and that's a really interesting job where it's like, yeah, if they do their job well, we don't know the trees are fake. Yeah, but then we don't know they ever did any work at all, which is a kind <laughs> of a weird dilemma to me. Yeah, um, but it's an interesting interesting puzzle. Um, but anywho, there's our there's our little tangent about movies and life. <laughs> um, so writing music, we're kind of getting ready for two albums here. I got a, my cheat sheet here. I know for no I seem to have a run of shows coming up. Uh, yeah. So we're heading to, yeah, I guess where are we heading there? Uh, we're doing two Pennsylvania dates. So like Friday, um, I don't remember the cities. Perfect. No uh, I only remember one of them actually. But uh, Friday we're doing Pennsylvania, then Saturday, which is my dad's birthday, Shout out, Dad. Shout out, um, Metallica Dad. <laughs> uh, Saturday, we're going to be in Richmond, Virginia. Cool. And then Sunday, we're back in Pennsylvania. Cool. I think we're like 10 miles outside of Philly. Cool. I know that. Okay. <laughs> That's cool. No, I'm, yeah. uh, as a kid, you always hear the, the artist get the name of the city wrong. Yeah. And uh, you're always like, dude, how is that possible to not know where you are? 
And then it seems embarrassing at it first, does. but then, and then like, as you get older, you spend yeah. more time traveling, and it's like, yeah, I don't know, I can't even imagine by that. Like, I'm in two or three places a week, yeah, I can't imagine being in seven of them, seven different countries in a week, much less, yeah. Of, it's like, yeah, dude, if you get anywhere close to the right city, like, good on you, that's enough. <laughs> um, so that's sick. I know when Caleb was here, he mentioned that you guys were building bunks, and I like, <laughs> saw I got you guys got that done, yeah. How was that <laughs> process? It was, uh, it was good. Um, they came out really good. I mm-hmm. think uh, we'll be touring in somewhat of luxury. There you go. Do you guys do a lot of like DIY stuff behind the behind the scenes for your band um, or bands? I mean, I guess like 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 stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Or um, I see. I'm just always curious about all the different things you have to do to make a band work. And building bunks is one of those. Like, yeah, you got to get it done because no one wants to sleep sitting up for <laughs> a couple yeah. of days um, or more than that even. But uh, but yeah, it's always kind of a weird, like no one signed up for a band expecting to build bunks. Um, yep. And then, you know, you have like 10 different jobs. It's like, Oh, content creator, audio guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's like the whole thing. It's, it's stressful for sure. It's like, um, which of those jobs like falls into your plate? So I'm kind of, I'm kind of both. Um, like I, I write, I don't write everything like for Actually, both bands. I I do write songs for both bands, but most of our members contribute. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I I do that, and then um, for As Within, me and our guitarist Matt kind of both do the content stuff. Okay, uh, which we're trying to get better at, get better quality stuff. But that's kind of what we do. And then you know when we have like full songs written, including lyrics, it's usually okay. Let's 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 go to Luke's house and demo it mm-hmm. um so I, I do that as well so you're demoing um, all the production stuff yeah when pretty did, much when did you learn production I, uh, yeah so at 12 ish we got guitar come in yeah. at 15 ish we got drums come in when does production come in so when i was in high school um my last two years my junior and senior um they had like this program called boses mm-hmm. where um in the morning for like basically half the day you go uh you get on a bus and they take you 20 minutes to like the next town over and it's basically like a trade school kind of thing but mm-hmm. you get like high school credits for it cool okay so like you know they have culinary school they have fashion uh obviously the audio stuff because mm-hmm. I, I did that um Gosh, so I, that's that cool. that started there and um it's a really good time for that as well yeah because at that point I wasn't writing I didn't know how to do it and uh obviously I didn't know any of the audio stuff so mm-hmm. I learned most of that there and then I started doing it on my own and figuring my, you know, how I work. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, then I'm out of college, uh, college, high school. And yeah. then, then I go to college. Um, and then it felt like when I got there, it was like, damn, I know a lot more than everybody here. And this is like, this sucks. Yeah. Cause now it's like, you felt like your peers were coming in, like they hadn't opened garage band once and they were just figuring out like, yeah. what is a snare drum? And you were like, no, no, no. I know how to play the instrument. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, and it was like, I remember like, and this is like, this is unrelated, I guess, but I was like, we had this project, and I was not going to mic a cab, I was just going to DI it, Mm -hmm. and everybody like looked at me like I was crazy, and I was like, you know you can do that, right? Like, amp sims like are just as good, Yeah. and yeah, I I got, they made fun of me for that, for sure. Interesting, (laughs) interesting. Well, whatever. Uh, I I won't put you on the spot, but I would bet that you have done more with music than a lot of them since yeah. then. Um, and I think that's always an interesting dynamic of like... Not to be biased, um, but I, I think I would agree. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. You don't have to say it. I'll say it for you. Um, but no, I think that's an interesting piece of this. Um, there's... With cameras talk a lot about how there's no barrier to entry. Or I've had this idea that like all you have to do to be a photographer in some sense is buy a camera. Mm-hmm. You know, to be a doctor, you have to go through schools. Like there is some process of weeding out idiots. And yeah. with photography, it's like if you have three hundred dollars, you're a photographer. Yeah. And some, and of course, there are a lot of other traits that make a good photographer. Then having a camera and three hundred dollars isn't enough to have the greatest camera. But to put in your Facebook bio to start selling to your friends, like yeah, we all started there. That's a good place to start. And with that comes a lot of people who then think they are photographers because they spent $300 on a camera and in the audio world suddenly like it's a similar thing of like, yeah. Um, yeah, I know what a snare drum is. I'm going to tell you all about it. It's like, no, no, no. You don't realize how many other options there are to mic this guitar. Like yeah. you don't have to mic the cab. You can go DI. And in that world, there's a hundred other worlds you can open up. Uh, yeah. I've, 
I mean, like, no hate to people that, like, do mic cabs because there's a very, like, distinct sound that mm-hmm. you get from that that you don't get from amp sims. But, like, yeah, I, I do. I agree with what you're saying for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think it's just an interesting interesting problem. Like, you get a lot of people who think they know what you're talking about because they have some some pearl of knowledge. They watched a couple uh, videos. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. And I think I try and catch myself even now of, like, I don't know all the things I don't know. So yeah. I'm talking about... Yeah, talking about something, be aware that I could be <laughs> completely fucked up and wrong about it, just doing my best to approximate it. Yeah. But yeah, we're all, we're all, we all probably were that idiot at some point. I'm sure I've punished someone in the same way I'm uh, talking about now. But uh, I'm definitely, I definitely was that idiot yeah. for a while. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it's cool that you get into production then. I'm sure that opens a lot of doors and forces you to uh, tackle the rest of the instruments. I'm sure bass gets picked up in there at some point. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, now you're producing producing you go through the music school and get that done uh hell yeah dude we were talking about the run of shows mm. all the places you're going uh, i want to talk about like van life a little bit so i know yeah you've built the bunks you've done some time on the road before yeah uh and of course we did the the big tours last year i guess we haven't even gotten gotten to that yet yeah. um but what's van life van life like for you guys with all the the friends in the van is so much fun but of course it isn't all just yeah it isn't always just a good time there's a lot of a lot of downtime a lot of survival that has to go on there what's yeah. that like for you guys I don't know. I I tend to, I tend to love it, yeah. and like my girlfriend thinks I'm weird for sure. loving living in a van with my boys. But yeah. it's just like I don't know. There's just like a certain camaraderie that like comes with that. That's like you know, mm-hmm. especially when you're with like your best friends too. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, we there you know there's no real miser like anybody being like ag like aggro. It's just mm-hmm. kind of like everybody's having fun all the time. Usually that's um, awesome. You know, we try to like do stuff that like will make our day more fun. Like we were talking about like um, because the drive from like the first show uh, in Pennsylvania to Richmond, Virginia, I was like looking at the routing and I guess we're going like right through D.C. Mm-hmm. I was like, yo, we should stop at D.C. at like two in the morning, rent some like bird scooters and just take our own tour. <laughs> So that sounds like, brilliant. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm laughing at the idea that this will be out tomorrow, like four days before you guys are in DC. And I like, I hope that someone's at the show and it's like, oh shit, we can go to DC and get a bird scooter with them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's the stuff like that that yeah. I think like really makes makes it fun. Yes, because it's like there's a certain level of like s- like spontaneous mm-hmm. like stuff. Um, you know, it's like most of the time I don't plan anything I'm gonna do when I'm gonna be somewhere. It's just kind of like we get there. It's like oh, they got this, or oh, we're here, we can go, you know, sure. here, we yeah. can go check this out, or oh, there's this new, like, mm-hmm. there's this place I've never heard of that's, like, supposed to have really good food, Yep. you know, it's like that stuff, um, it's the small things, I think. Definitely, sure. I think it's really smart and wise, you have to, like, make the trip fun, because yep. otherwise it is just... It feels like a job. Yeah, and yeah. it's, yeah, it's not always glamorous, and if you don't, yeah, find a way to make it fun, it isn't always that, and you are with your boys, but, like, yeah, being in the van with your boys isn't as cool as being on bird scooters in D.C. <laughs> in the middle of the night. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, that's a good option there. Um, and I think it's interesting that um, Ashanti disagreed with that because I assume she's toured a little bit as well. So it's not like she's yeah. coming from uh, – no. So it is interesting to me the way that tour affects us all so differently and that it is such a, I don't know, just a unique beast that everyone kind of approaches differently. Yeah. Uh, um, sometimes I'll be like, oh, like, I miss, like, being on the road. Mm-hmm. Just be like, you miss not having a shower <laughs> and, like, smelling bad and, yep. like, living right next to someone? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there is, like, a really intense camaraderie there, and yeah. I think that's a good word for it. Um, of Yeah, it is a friendship, but there is a survival thing that also comes in and a, almost a family bonding thing that happens there. For sure. Uh, and it's a really, yeah, unique level of closeness. Yeah. Uh, is it tough to then come back home? That was always my trouble. Like, I loved that time on the road of being bonded to those people, but then it made the next, like, two months after I got home real hairy of, like, I don't know these people, and now I'm in this world that I don't feel accustomed to totally, and, like, yeah. I'm happy to be in a Walmart, but they're saying I need a shower, and, like, <laughs> none of this adds up to me. Yeah. yeah has, that, has that been tough for you when you, yeah, have to come home from that? Yeah, I think um, the longer I'm out, the, the harder it is, because yeah, it's, yeah. like... Like, when I went out with Invent Animate, that was, like... I was gone for pretty much two months, mm-hmm. um, and... Yeah, coming back from that was, like, it was hard because, you know, you get so used to it and then, you know, it's like, wow, like, get home. It's like, now it's like, now I'm processing, like, the last two months of my life. Like, you know, it's like there's no no processing it, like, 
through it. It's just like you get home and it's like, okay, now I got to decompress. Yeah. Like get yeah, yeah. back to like, like realign. Yeah. Um, and that's imagine. always tough for sure. Yeah. So that, uh, for context, you were asked to fill in for Invent Animate and this was six ish months ago, less than a year ago. No, it was actually, it was a, it was a year ago. About a year ago. Yeah. Um, awesome. So it was two months and, uh, quickly was that full U S was that West coast, East coast. Where was the, yeah, kind of gist of that tour. Yeah, it was, uh, it was full U <laughs> full U S and like two Canada dates. Okay. Um, um yeah. but then, yeah, I can imagine that. Yeah, that's. Uh, I've been out for I think a week, two weeks maybe top. So two months is longer than I can imagine. I think being in a van and yeah, that yeah. that decompression process must be pretty gnarly to come back and get used to the uh, yeah. I don't know. There's a convenience of tour. Like you also don't have to think about anything. Your life is programmed and where you're going, what you're doing, and then your job is just survival. Once you're there, of find the pizza place, find the CVS, make sure you had a Walmart on the way. Yeah. And then you come home and it's like, oh, I gotta pay bills again. Yeah, I gotta, gotta go back to work. Alarm like, uh, work. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Did you have any uh, any tricks or tip in that in that process? Like, how did you? Uh, yeah. How did you unwind after your tour? Or just took it like a champ, took it on the chin, and moved on. I get. I guess. I don't know. It it was it was hard because that was especially like that was the first tour I'd ever done. Yeah. And okay. Wow. That was like honestly a pretty incredible first tour. Mm-hmm. Like almost it was pretty much the whole thing was sold out except for like three shows. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And like biggest shows I'd ever you know done before. Mm-hmm. So it was it was really cool for that. And then uh, they you know Invent Animates like also one of my favorite bands in the genre. I just I think they do the whole modern metalcore thing better than everyone else. Yeah. Um, yeah, the real unique flavor of it. Yeah, for sure. But, yeah, no, coming back from that was was tough because I didn't, like, I didn't have any prior experience of, like, being out for that long before. That's so I, like, it kind of took me a long time. I bet, yeah. Um, and then, like, the next tour I did, like, I kind of, like, already, I was like, all right, I, I like, now I know what this is like and I know... I know how I'm going to feel when I come back and now I now that I have that experience mm-hmm. it's not going to be like it's not going to take me as long mm-hmm. you know like when I got back from the last tour I did it was like about a week and then I was like you know ready to kind of get back to regular mm-hmm. life that's I didn't realize that was like your first run of shows altogether that's a well, crazy first uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> first time traveling and seeing the world for sure um I mean you know before that like I had done like, you know, weekend runs and like, yeah. Like, I think the longest I'd been out was like five or six days. Wow. So, yeah. like, compared to, you know, that 60 tour, days. it was yeah. like, it was nothing. Like, those, that five days ain't shit. I remember so. uh, we were working together in like the, the build up as you were learning those songs. And I remember the, yeah, you're saying Invent Anime is a band or you were just talking about how, yeah, they're a band you look up to as well. So, that must have been a crazy call to get yeah how did you end up how did you end up in that role and then the yeah what is that month or two of figuring it out and getting ready for tour like (laughs) oh man it's it's always interesting thinking back on this because it was like so random like i saw like in december i'm just like scrolling through instagram i see fit for a king says trey is there he's there he's their drummer now and then i see a post from invent animate you know congratulating him and then uh, you know, ultimately saying he's going to be transitioning from our drummer to more of like a creative role in the band. Because similar to me, I believe he also was a guitar player first. Gotcha. So, you know, he's been writing with them. But yeah, I saw that and all my friends saw it. And it was just like messages, messages, messages. Yo, did you see this? Yo, you should like, you should try. And it did, I, I kind of brushed them all off because I was like, yeah, you know, like, this would probably never happen. Like I'm, yeah. I'm kind of just a nobody. Like I don't have much experience touring, like for real. And then uh, my buddy Danny O'Brien uh, used to play in Noai. Uh, he hit me up and he was like, um, "Yo, man, like you should you should like really try this because you're, I think you're the best fit for this." And That's I think cool. You good do for it. him. That's and a I good was phone like, call. I like that got me excited because yeah. like, you know, he wasn't just like, "Yo, do this." He was like. You know, those are like, important. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that that like kind of changed my mind, and it was like, all right, maybe I will try because what do I have to lose? Mm-hmm. So and that's also exactly it. Yeah. yeah. So then yeah. I get home from what I'm doing that day, and for an hour I'm practicing one song because mm-hmm. I was like, I know this song. I practiced it over quarantine because it was fun, and then 
It's like, yeah, I'm so just going to tighten it up to kind of repolish it. Yeah. Yeah. So I do that. Then I make the video and then, you know, I send it over. I upload it to an unlisted YouTube link. So, you know, public people can't see it. Um, and then, yeah, I send it a week later. I look back on it and it has like 30 views. I was like, okay, so someone's watching it. Mm -hmm. That's cool for what it is. Then like two weeks go by, they announced the Polaris like Moss the Flames tour. I was like, all right, well, guess that's not happening. So yeah. I'll just move on. Then three days later, I wake up and I like check my notifications. The whole band follows me and I get a text from Keaton that says, what's up, brother? <laughs> I was like, wow. oh, okay, I guess this might happen. So yeah, it was cool. Hell yeah. That's a, and then how long is that before they leave for a tour? The, the tour starts. So I got that text. It was like maybe January 8th or something. Okay. Early January. And then the tour started March 12th. Two months. Yeah. So he then he's like, yo, can you send me a video of you playing this song and that song? Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, cool. Do that. Then I get on the phone and they're like, yeah, so we want to we wanna take you. And um, I was like, all right, can I have the set list? Because it's getting close. <laughs> like, I really, I want to make sure I have it and there's no worries. That's crazy, yeah. And I, like, didn't get the full set list till like, February 1st. I bet. So I, like, literally had, ex like, exactly a month. That's wild. It. Yeah. That's wild. And I, yeah, that's... And of course, that's not not a band anyone wants to learn in a month. Like there are, there probably are bands out there that you could tackle in a month. And yeah. I assume there's plenty of, yeah, yeah, plenty of things that are very accessible and easy to learn. And Vent Anime is not one of them at all. That yeah. must have been a, yeah. Again, I don't know nothing about the drums, but I know enough to know that that wouldn't be the first band I would try and cover if I was learning. Yeah, uh, I always felt that way about it too. I was like, oh, like it's like really hard, but like. They sent me the set list. I was like, I know all of these songs mm -hmm. like by memory. Like I know, cool, okay. I know them as almost as, as if I wrote them. So mm -hmm. I was like, all right, cool. Like this shouldn't take me that long. Yeah. And I'm not gonna think about it and stress myself out. I'm just gonna try and approach it. And yep. Like song by song. That's very wise. Yeah. It still didn't help my stress level though. I was like, I bet. losing my mind sometimes. Yep. <laughs> Trying um, to learn it all, but. But it it gets done. We're at the take me to night one of the tour. So you're getting on stage. It's a couple thousand people in the room of. Yeah, we're used to we're used to a couple hundred maybe, and now it's ten times the size of that. And you're getting ready, and you're going, I think I know these six songs, but of course, in that moment, your brain is saying, No, you don't. You don't know anything. You never even played the drums before. Yeah, uh, yeah. What is that? What is the first song like when you get on stage? Man, it was. I was like really excited. Yeah. Um, my parents flew out to California to see the first show. That's they cool. were they were really excited that I got awesome. to do that, and. Um, they flew out and they were really stoked after. But that's yeah, a proud the, parent moment for sure to get to fly to California and see your son play. That's yeah. awesome. Good for them. Yeah, that was that was really cool. I this is unrelated, but like that morning, like they like they get to California and they my dad just sends me a photo of them with Polaris, like no context. <laughs> and I was like, What? <laughs> I was like, Where did you find that? I haven't even met them yet. Yeah, I was like, I'm literally not that's, I'm not even there yet. Like how do you, That's funny. Yeah, it was, it was funny. But yeah, so yeah, I was freaking out before we got on stage for sure. I was like, it's like, man, like losing it. And they're like, course, you yeah. can't be nervous. <laughs> we can be nervous because we haven't played a show in like two years. You can't be nervous. And I was like, all right, yeah, you're right. So okay. Then, then it was just it was just fun after that. Hell yeah. Hell so. yeah. That's good. That's a yeah, an interesting challenge for them to bring you in of like, yeah, they know it's a hard thing. Obviously, bring you with confidence. They're not going to bring you in if they don't think you're going to kill it. Yeah. But still, it's a, yeah, they know it's a tough challenge they're asking you to fill in on. So that's a, yeah, it's good they handled it well and kind of made you, helped you feel comfortable there because you can imagine the other version of it is they show up and you're like, so, you know that kick pattern, right? Yeah. And you're like, um. <laughs> um sort of. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. I thought I did before you asked right now. Yeah. Uh, but hell yeah. So then shows generally go well. Does anything stand out on that tour of the cool city, <laughs> crazy show, crazy venue? Um, I think by far from that tour and just like, I guess in general so far and like my musical career, um, the fa my favorite thing I ever got to do was on that tour and it meant a lot to me to – so um, the words. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting my words tripped up. Um, That's all good. We don't need them that much. Yeah. <laughs> so we get to Worcester, and we're playing downstairs Palladium. And I don't think it was sold out until, like, that day. Mm -hmm. So, like, it was like, is this going to break the streak? Mm -hmm. And then, like, right before – Avoid starts because so basically that day I don't know if you were were you there I don't think I was actually so, unfortunately I missed it for I don't remember what I was doing but so that show that show was um, 
So the Fit for a King, Silent Planet, Hollow Front, Avoid Tour merged mm-hmm. with the Polaris Tour for That's that one day. That's the coolest thing they do, yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, so like we didn't know if it was sold out like right until Avoid went on. And Damn. then they start playing and they're killing it. And the group chat's just like, hey, so we got another one. It's sold out. There we go. Oh, I get to play this venue sold out. I've never been on this stage before. Like I've played upstairs Palladium so many times and Mm -hmm. I always wanted to be down there. And then now I'm playing it and it's sold out. And yeah, that was definitely, that was a really big moment for me. That's awesome. And that was midway through the tour. So at that point you're comfortable, you're in the swing of things and you can really soak it in and enjoy it. Yeah. Hell yeah. For sure. It was, I think that was actually like the halfway point or like maybe two shows before the halfway point. But Mm -hmm. yeah, no. That was that was something for that's sure. That's cool. That's wild. Yeah, that's a that's a big stage. I've only been in that room. I've been on the main stage when it's empty. I was taking promos uh, a couple of times, and it's weird how small that room feels when it's not full of people. Yeah, and it was really yeah confusing to me. The next time I was in there, and it was full, and it's like it feels n- enormous when yeah. it's sold out and full. And then yeah, you're in there when there's not people, and it's like oh, this doesn't feel that big. It's a really weird. Yeah, I guess maybe most venues probably feel like that or some sense of that. Um, but I guess I would imagine the people would make it feel smaller, not bigger. I don't yeah. know. Um, it's, it's weird how that happens. Cause I've that de- like, I saw under oath there like four or five years ago and it was, I'm pretty sure it was like sold out or almost, but mm-hmm. it like people were in there. I was like, wow, this is, this venue's big. Mm-hmm. And then for some reason I was like still there when like people left. Yeah. I don't remember why, but then I'm like looking around, I'm like. How does that even work? Yeah. Like, where is the math on that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it's not just me. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if it, it must be other places. I'm sure there's some, some Google search I could do to figure this out, but I don't, yeah, one day, one day I'll have the budget for a laptop right here and yeah. I'll ask Google. Um, we're not quite there yet. Um, uh, You'll wanna, get there though. <laughs> we'll get there. Hopefully. That's the goal. Uh, yeah. We're in the double digits now. So then it was one of those like double digits exciting but that means a triple digits is now the next milestone so that's a scary scary uh scary barrel to stare down but we'll make it happen uh i wanted to wrap up with like so moving forward it feels like you've learned every instrument it feels like you're doing everything like what is the next interesting thing to you is there another instrument that stands out as like yeah you wish you could play that is there a genre that seems interesting or are you just yeah, in the swing of no I see as within stuff and I'm gonna pour myself into metal core and figure out what's what's next when I get there. I guess that's kind of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I haven't really discovered it yet. I guess my thing right now is like writing no I stuff, writing as within stuff. Like I want it to be metalcore mm-hmm. but like have a like unique identity to it. Yeah. Um but yeah. I don't know. Either way though, I'm like really stoked on everything I'm doing. Like the No I album is gonna be I think one of my favorite things I've ever worked on. Hell yeah. And uh as within stuff is always just really fun. Hell yeah. So Hell yeah. And both of them are both of them are in the works or anything we can say about timelines yet, or is that further down the road? So both bands have uh we have music videos done for like new singles. Hell yeah. So they'll kind of I think they'll both be coming out close to the same time. Hell I'm yeah. not sure when exactly, maybe a month or two. Uh but yeah. As far as like No Eyes album uh instrumentally most of it's done oh yeah so now caleb's getting to work on the the yelling and singing Mm -hmm. um is that written like with the top line there be written or you guys now in the studio kind of writing the top line like kind of the yeah i guess you write an instrumental album and then you go back and write words over it or the words written and you guys are just making it happen now formally so i think like some people can do that like we're like okay i have lyrics here you go Mm -hmm. write a song I can't do that, okay. and I think at least for No I like we don't do that. We usually write like full songs and like try to like place like a certain like feeling mm-hmm. on it, and then from there like it'll kind of inspire the lyrics. I mean, I even do that with As Within too, um, and I know Matt does as well. Um, and that kind of gets to the film score side of things, almost of you're kind of building a scene and then letting someone populate that world. Yeah, uh, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, even like the other day, like. Uh, Mitchell was telling me, he was like, yo, I have this really good chorus that I want to record and then you can write a song around it. And I was like, I can't do that though. Interesting. Like you're putting me in a box. I yeah. can't, like I need to do it start to finish. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. So basically we go into the studio and then we record like all the songs that we have, rework them maybe mm-hmm. a little bit. And then Caleb will get to work on vocals. My first fly. Uh, <laughs> welcome buddy. 
Um, hell yeah. Where are you guys recording now? Chris Wiseman. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. He's the man. <laughs> shout out Chris Wiseman. Shout out. Uh, shout out Currents and Shadow of Intent. <laughs> um, yeah. He's awesome. Hell I love yeah. that dude. Hell yeah. King shit. Yeah. It's been cool to watch them grow out of Connecticut. And They're so huge right scene. now. Yeah. It's it's weird to me sometimes. Yeah. Uh, just to yeah, hear someone be like, oh, I just saw Currents the other night. I'm like... Hang on, what, where where are you? Like, yeah. <laughs> how? Uh, but it's sick, yeah. It's sick to watch them grow up. Um, my man, I appreciate your time. I think I think that's a good good place to start wrapping up. Uh, is there anything that I should have talked about that we didn't talk about today? Anything comes to your mind? No is also a perfect answer. I just no, want to make sure you, everyone has a chance. Cool. What should people look out for? Where can people find you online? What is what's going on in your life? Uh, all right, so. I'm going to be trying to do content, uh, drum stuff, and uh, guitar stuff too, maybe. Uh, my Instagram is at who's Luke V, because who is who is Luke V? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah. and If they don't know by now, then they'll never yeah, fucking know. Dude. It's, we've it's we've been trying for 45 minutes to teach them who Luke V is. <laughs> uh, exactly. Um, yeah. If you want to follow As Within, So Without, or No I Has Seen, As Within, So Without is at AWSW Band. No I is at No I is seen band. Hell yeah. On That's Instagram. clean. Yeah. You got them all unlocked, dude. Did my best. You've been doing it. Yeah. I've been practicing for this I, I always like forget my own social media. <laughs> it's really tough sometimes. I was like, yeah, what's your Instagram? I'm like, oh, there's like three things I think it might be. And I'm forgetting which <laughs> words are involved. And is there a hyphen here? And all the good stuff. But my man, appreciate you coming out. I will. I'll see you when I see you. Hell see yeah. you on tour soon. I'll see content. I'll see photos from it, hopefully. Yeah. Um, hell yeah, man. Appreciate you. We'll talk soon.